Galatians 5, 22 to 25 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. I don't know about you, but uh, when I hear the, those last two fruits of goodness and faithfulness, it feels a bit vague, like Paul had all these really specific ones of joy and peace and, and patience and, and gentleness, and they feel quite defined and quite specific, but goodness in particular, and faithfulness to an extent, is kind of like the word nice. If you ever did creative writing or anything like that in high school or primary school, you'll have been told not to use the word nice because it doesn't really mean anything. And I think sometimes goodness can feel like a throwaway, like Paul was like, yeah, all those things, and then just be nice, just, just, just you know, good. But that isn't actually what it means. That's just at first glance. I think also with goodness, we can end up associating it purely with about good behaviour or ticking a box. Um, I was out on a socially distanced walk with my mum the other day uh, in our, uh, the village I grew up in, and we walked past uh, the nursery yard, uh, all closed up. And um, I was thinking about how uh, when I was about three years old, four years old, uh, there was this group of boys in nursery who never did anything that they were told and they'd put their hoods over their heads and run around and pretend that their coats were capes. And I used to call them the Batman boys and talk about how they didn't do anything that the teacher said because um, I was a bit of a suck up to be honest. And um, I think that I have this very rigid idea and we all can have this very tick box kind of, this is what you're supposed to do to be good. And I also like to think that in calling them the Batman boys, I also had some grasp at the tender age of three and a half of a morally ambiguous Christopher Nolan style Batman, um, even back then in 1995. So goodness and faithfulness. Let's take a closer look because I reckon they're not just vague. I reckon they're not just throwaway. I think these are amazing fruits that build up to integrity of character. Let's start with goodness. Goodness, the original word that's used in the Greek is agathosune. I think I've said that right. If I haven't, forgive me. Um, goodness, agathosune, uh, comes from God. Um, and we can sum it up in two ways. The, the word that's used here is in purpose and in purity. That's purpose and purity. So to start with, with purpose, um, as in it's something being good at its purpose. So in Genesis, when God uh, makes the whole world and the universe and everything, um, he says, he looks at everything each day and he says, and it was good. And God saw that it was good. And it doesn't mean morally good. He means um, it means good as its purpose, good in and of itself, like good in substance. So um, like someone being good at something, something, someone being good at a skill. Um, and so goodness in purpose is, is when it talks about the fruit of the spirit, is like us being good at being who God created us to be, being good at our purpose. God made you for a purpose. God made you and you are his masterpiece, it says in Ephesians. And so when God calls goodness out of us through the fruits of the Spirit, through his Holy Spirit living in us and us being in step with the Spirit, that's the goodness he's talking about. It's about us being good at who he created us to be. The second aspect of goodness is purity, which is like morally good, uh, being a good person, doing the right thing, being motivated uh, in purity. Um, so like in Matthew 5, when Jesus uh, preaches to a great crowd, he says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's that kind of good. So goodness, Agatha Sune, is sub summed up in purity and in purpose. Let's turn to faithfulness, the second fruit that we're looking at today. The Greek word for this is pistis. And I might have said that wrong as well, apologies. Um, this isn't just about belief in and of itself, but more about trust and fidelity. So it's not the faith like us having a faith and a belief, 
Um, it's like, um, again, we can split it into two. Uh, it's summed up in trust and fidelity to other people and steadfastness in how we live. So it's like faithfulness to others and faithfulness in like our, the way that we do our lives. So I sum that up as, uh, the way I remember it, is fidelity to others. So someone who keeps their promises, who is trustworthy, who doesn't gossip. And also steadfastness in how we live. So I think that's around faithfulness to God, faithfulness to the purposes that he's called us to. And steadfastness in the sense of not being distracted and blown about by the wind. In James, it talks about don't be distracted, don't be like waves that are just blown about in the sea, but be um, intentional focus on God, run the race laid out for you, it says in Hebrews. That's that kind of steadfastness. So it's not about, um, it's not being flaky, it's not uh, being distracted, but being committed and loyal. So pistis, faithfulness, that's steadfastness and fidelity to others. And that's also goodness, agathosune, purity and purpose. And we can sum them up in thinking about integrity of character. So how do we grow in these? Do we just try harder? I don't know about you, but um, in lockdown, I've been watching a lot more TV than I did previously. And one of the things that myself and my husband, Ben, and Annabelle, who's been staying with us, have ended up watching is the TV series, Friends, which is a great example of a show which gets less and less funny as each season goes on. But we've still made it to season nine. Well done, us. Um, and one of the episodes in Friends uh, is where Phoebe tries to prove to her friend, Joey, that there is such a thing as a selfless good deed. Um, so she lets herself be stung by a bee, but then realises that the bee will die. She uh, donates money to charity, but then there's this big announcement and then everyone announces her name that she's donated this money. So she uh, feels bad because then she gets to perform that and enjoy uh, having performed the good deed. And it just reminds me of how when we just try to be a good person, when we just try to be more faithful in our own strength, it can end up actually being um, not quite as good or as selfless as we might think. We end up relying on that performance. We end up relying on our money or our skills. Um, we end up substituting integrity with performance. We think that our skills, our talents are what's important rather than real goodness. We think it's performance that gets us in the room with people and gets us in the room with Jesus. We make it all about what we post online or what we volunteer in or what we give away. We make it about whether we pray enough or read our Bible enough or whether we're talented enough or clever enough, whether we're up front at work or in church and whether we are woke enough. Jesus values integrity over performance. He values character over competency. 1 Samuel 16 verse 7 says, God doesn't look at what people look at. He looks at the heart. He looks at our character. It's how we're called to live, is to grow in our character and not just make it all about what we can do and how good we can perform, how good we can look to other people. And when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, what that means is God's Spirit is invited to live in us. When we invite him in and we say, God, come and fill me with your Spirit, we're being in step with his Spirit, like it says in verse 25. It's like being rooted in new soil. In Psalm 1 it says, um, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord who meditates on God's law day and night that person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither whatever they do prospers doesn't mean we're going to have an easy life but it means that when we want to live in God and make home in him it's like a tree that is taking up the goodness and the nutrients it's planted in this soil and that's how it bears the fruit by taking up that goodness and bearing it on its branches Jesus said I am the vine and you are the branches remain in me abide in me make home with me and I will remain in you Jesus promised that to us. So it's not about performing 
or trying harder, but about being rooted in our relationship with God, living in step with the Spirit. That means committing our thoughts and our decisions, our worries to God, inviting him into our everyday lives through prayer and through the Bible, through asking him to change our hearts, through asking for his forgiveness, for him to renew our minds and to commit to making a home with God and being at home with him and saying, come and make a home with me, God, enter my life, change my life, change my character and show that fruit in my life. I think Psalm 51 sums this up really well, sums up goodness and faithfulness and our approach and the way we want to go forward. David says, the writer of the Psalms, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a pure, a good heart, O God, and renew a steadfast, a faithful spirit within me. That purity of wanting goodness and wanting to have a steadfast spirit, God. Renew that steadfast spirit within me that doesn't get distracted, that doesn't get blown about, but is steadfast in following you and in fidelity to others. And so our response today is to simply and humbly, like David, ask God to bear goodness and faithfulness, purity of heart and steadfast spirit and faithfulness in our character. And this isn't about feeling guilty or ashamed, feeling not good enough. The context of this psalm, David wrote this psalm when he um, was plotting, when he had plotted to um, kill the husband of the woman that he had slept with. He had slept with Bathsheba, he'd committed adultery with her, he'd been unfaithful um, by taking her away from her husband and plotting to murder him. He was in the worst place possible. He was supposed to be an exalted, holy, good, worshipful king of Israel with everything that he could ever want. And he'd still like let God down. He'd still let his character down. But he's able to come to God humbly and say, create in me a pure heart, God because God's mercies are new every morning. So we don't need to come into this feeling like we're the worst person in the world or we're terrible because we're not good enough because all have fallen short of the glory of God. We can all come humbly and pray this prayer and ask God, create me a pure heart God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And it's also not about performance. It's not about being good enough. All of us have gossiped. All of us have lied. All of us have blind spots. All of us have anger. All of us are not as anti-racist as we should be. All of us have been flaky. All of us have let people down and let God down. Imagine a life where integrity was valued over performance, where you weren't just trying to be good enough. Imagine where you weren't feeling guilt-ridden or feeling less than or scared that someone's going to discover that you're not the good person that you're trying to project into the world. Imagine being rooted like that tree by running water, being secure in God, being undistracted, steadfast in character, good in purpose, doing what you were made to do and pure in heart so that you can see even more of God and his work in your life. That's what I want because I know that I cannot do it in my own strength. So, Let's ask our good father, because we all need more goodness and more faithfulness. This week, let's be united in praying this prayer of Psalm 51 over our lives, over our character and over our world. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen.